So this week we're going to have a look at packages and functions in our we're pretty much done with the basics of data handling, so now we need to know how to make sense of it. Um, from previous instalments, we know what kind of data it is and we know how to look things up. But uh, this week is more about adding value to the data that you've got already um, and having a look at the tools that are available to you to help you do that. Okay, so if we just get started, we're going to go firstly with packages and then on to functions because they're within the packages so you would need to know how to load a package to use a function. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the very first thing that you need to do to get any packages loaded into your RStudio environment and that is the install packages function. So uh, we're just going to use the tidyverse as an example. And you can either run this line of code or you can click your way through using the install button and then searching for the package you want and click in install just make sure that the install dependencies is checked and click install that's because I've already had this package loaded previously uh, and then you'll see that it's run the, the line of code in the console by whichever uh, way you use and then it appears in your list of packages and you can load it into your current working environment using the library function. So that tells your R Studio session, your R session that you want to use the functions in that package within this piece of work. And you can either use the library function or you can do like I just did there and scroll down the list of packages and check the box next to it and they both have the same effect. Periodically you will want to update your packages so you can do that using the update button under your packages tab. Let's just do one that I use fairly frequently and then install updates and it will just make sure that you're running the latest version with all the uh, most recent changes built into that package. And you can have a look at the package help pages by using the help function and running that will take you to its relevant uh, help pages in the viewer. And you can do that again by using the scroll and click or by running the specific line that you want. So here's the help page for the tidyverse and the help page for package dplyr which is part of the tidyverse um, and is a great package to get to grips with on its own. And there's the help page for that again just demonstrating that function. And then once you're into that help package, you can use a, uh, a another search to look for specific functions within that package. So say you want to, you know that there's a function in that package that you want, but you can't quite remember how to use it. So we're just going to choose a function in the list. So bind rows or bind calls, and we're using the double question mark for bind calls and this is quite useful if you can only sort of remember the first half of a function and then you've forgotten how it finishes or something like that and then you can just run that row and it will pull up all the all the things it thinks are relevant and then you can see in the help page that there are uh, examples, usages, which arguments need to go in that function and these examples are really good because you can just copy and paste them into your console or into your script and run them line by line and see how the function you want is intended to be used and you can make sure that you are replicating that and it's doing what it should be doing. So if we see here we're just creating two, two data frames and then we're just binding the rows together one and two. It's popped up underneath and then we'll do a right assign to three and that will generate another data set up in the top right hand corner and then you can see that that has done what you were expecting it to do. And that's a good way of making sure that your code is doing as you'd expect it. 
So one of the best things about R is that you can have a look at the code for a function uh, and examine that just by typing its name without using any parentheses. So the first line, once you've run that code, the first line shows the how the arguments are specified and then subsequent lines show the code and the final line starting with the uh, little less than symbol can generally be ignored. And do the same for length. So you can see there that uh, it has a single input. Um, it return, Length returns the length of an object, so it will only allow you to provide it with the object within the brackets, and that's defined by the argument x. So we'll just use our three database that we generated before, length 3, 11, 11 variables. And then if we take a look at uh, things like multiple inputs, so some functions have multiple inputs and not all of them are necessarily mandatory, but uh, we'll take an optional argument. So. So the head function requires one object and then you can put in optional arguments such as uh, the number of lines that you want it to show. Um, so if you wanted to investigate that a little bit more you could, you could change that number and that's optional. If you don't provide that the function will still work. So now looking at the rnorm function which just allows us to generate a vector of values from a normal distribution we can tell it how many values we need, and then we can optionally provide the mean and standard deviation to describe the normal curve that values should be selected from. Um, and if we don't specify them, they will have default values of zero and one, which can be seen when you run that, that line without the brackets. And so here we're just gonna provide n equals five, and then we're going to specify our mean and our standard deviation. So you can, once you've put the comma in, if you press the tab on your keyboard, it will bring up anything with a purple square next to it is um, an argument, and that is just a helpful reminder for perhaps what you need to put in next to get what you're expecting out of the argument. So there we go, we can see that top line has got the default settings, and then our two lines that we've run one with the default and one where we've set our own mean and standard deviation. Now if we take a look at the sum function, this is a, a function that will take an unlimited amount of inputs, so it will just sum the values from a number of objects. And the ellipsis, the three dots, is used to show when we as a user can provide any number of values. Just adding a little note in here to refer back to the blog for a little bit of extra information that we haven't included in the video. Um, I think sometimes it's easier to cast your eye over something and be able to read it and make sense of it yourself rather than watch me gabble on and try and explain it and make the video much longer than it actually needs to be. And so, I think this might be the last one, the predict function um, is one of those where it's got an ellipsis at the end of its arguments when it utilises other functions and they have optional or default values. So it allows us to take a model we've already built and apply it to some new data and it works for many different types of models and these different models expect different types of inputs. So some models expect data frames, others expect time series, and so on and so on. And there's a lot of potential variations, but the only thing that's mandatory is the model object. So as you can see here, we've created a model and then we've run it within the predict 
but we've applied it to a different data set. So the model stays the same, but the data can change with each iteration. And that's pretty much it for today. Um, I hope you found that valuable. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I'll see you in a future series, hopefully. Okay, so that's all for this week. Uh, well, that's all for the uh, Learn to Our Beginners introduction sort of series. We've covered all the basic bases and I think there's, there's plenty there for you to take away with you and uh, play around with and learn from and build on your on your knowledge on your own. Um, there will be a few more blog posts coming up, so look out for those. Um, yeah, so I hope you found that valuable and that you there are things that you wanted to take away from that and uh, carry on with. Um, yeah, so I will see you in the next series. Bye.